that we think, I don't worry, I don't fret. I know it's only a matter of time before he shows his hand. If you believe that God is going to show his hand in these days and times, honk your heart, type amen in the comment section. Let's give God some praise.
anybody in here going to rejoice? Is anybody in here going to be glad in the that the Lord has made? Anybody ready to declare that this is my exodus?
thank you, dear God, for all that you have done. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for what you are doing right now. We thank you, dear God, for what we trust, believe, and know that you are going to do. We thank you, dear God, that our lying down last night was not in death. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for watching over us all night long. Thank you, dear God, for waking us up this morning. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for just being God and being God all by yourself. We dare not take for granted that we have a roof over our head. We don't take for granted that we have clothes on our back. We don't take for granted that we have a reasonable portion of health. We don't take for granted, dear God, the food that you put on our table. And so right now, dear God, we just come to say thank you. We lift up those, dear God, in the hour of bereavement, those that are sick and those that are shut in. Right now, dear God, I lift up my friend, my brother, my brother in Christ, the Reverend Charles Miles. Do what only you are able to do for Miles right now, Lord. Be with his wife and be with his boys and be with, be with them right now, Heavenly Father. And dear God, just keep us mindful that in all that we do, we should always acknowledge you. We should always give you the honor. Always give you the glory. Always give you the praise. Dear God, we love you. Dear God, we thank you. Continue to order our steps. Continue to lead us and guide us. We claim victory in the matchless name of Jesus. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. Amen. scripture for this morning comes from 1st Peter the 5th chapter and beginning at the 8th verse 1st Peter the 5th chapter and beginning at verse number 8 be clear headed keep alert your accuser the devil is on the prowl like a roaring lion Seeking someone to devour. Resist him. Stand firm in the faith. Do so in the knowledge that your fellow believers are enduring the same suffering throughout the world. After you have suffered for a little while, the grace of the God of all grace, the one who called you into his eternal glory, is Christ Jesus will restore, empower, strengthen, and establish you. To him be power forever and always. Amen. Our praise team will come and lead us in another song.
of the devil is on the prowl like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him standing firm in the faith. Do so in the knowledge that your fellow believers are enduring the same suffering throughout the world. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace the one who called you into his eternal glory in Jesus Christ will himself restore, empower, strengthen, and establish you. To him be power forever and always. Amen. We come this morning uh, having to deal with a pandemic in the middle of a pandemic to preach from the subject doing more with less doing more with less I don't have to tell you What's going on in our world, what's going on in our nation, what's going on in our community. We are in, excuse me, chaotic times, perilous times. We are experiencing a pandemic in the middle of a pandemic. And as we take a look back at the videos from the 50s and the 60s, we see the same issues of racism, oppression, and suppression 
that our foreparents fought, bled, and died for still going on today. And so my brothers and my sisters, we ask the questions. We want to know how long shall we suffer and how long must we be in despair? How long do we have to take this mess? And we also realize that we go through so much and we've been through so much yet we are still able to stand tall and still able to stand firm and still able to keep our faith in the Lord. That's because it is just in us to make the best out of any and every situation. Am I talking to anybody in here? We have always been able to take the scraps and make us a beautiful quilt for our bed. We've always been able to take the leftovers and declare that a stomach full is a stomach full. We've always been able to take the hand-me-downs and make it do what it do. Am I preaching to anybody here on this morning? We've always been able, we've always been able to do what we've got to do even when we've got less than someone else. It is just in our walk and it's in our talk and it's in our entire being. But at the same time, can I tell y'all that we are just tired. Tired of being forgiving and tired of having to turn the other cheek and tired of being the bigger person. I said we're tired of being ignored and tired of our voices being silenced and tired of being tired of being tired of being tired. tired. And so as we take a look at the text, Peter is, excuse me, Paul, Peter is writing the letter to the church and wants to remind us that we're going to have to suffer sometimes. Anybody in here ever had to suffer on this journey, had to suffer in this life? Seems as though nothing would go your way. But my brothers and my sisters, I just stopped by to encourage somebody. Our trouble is not going to last always. Our tears are not going to fall always. There's going to come a time in our life where God will bless us beyond our understanding. And for some of us, we've already experienced God's goodness. We've already experienced God's grace. We've already experienced God's mercy. So we know that if we hold on and if we hold out just a little bit longer, we can testify that we are able to do more with less. And so I want to just encourage somebody that all that we have, all that we need, all that the Lord has provided for us. I can tell you that we can't please everybody. Somebody is always going to disagree with you. But can I tell you that as a Christian, that as a believer, as somebody that loves the Lord, we can't allow anyone or anything to stand in our way from receiving our blessings. Come on high. Y'all know we've always had to do more with less. We've always had to do it. Tonight's dinner. Might have to heat it up tomorrow over some grits for your breakfast. Oh, y'all don't have to blow the horn on that. I'm talking about my testimony and my life. We've always had to do more with less. Having to wrap that belt around your pants a few times. 
Your older sibling can no longer wear it. It's not quite your size yet. But it's the best that mama and daddy can do for you at this time. Having to do more with less. Found myself the other day asking CJ and Hunter if I look like I'm made of money. Found myself the other day having to tell them we got McDonald's at home. Having to ask my wife, do we have stock in Amazon? We have always found a way to make more with less. And so the text says that when we have suffered for a little while, the mighty God that we serve, not going to send an angel, but the mighty God we serve himself will restore. The mighty God we serve will empower. The mighty God we serve will strengthen. The mighty God we serve will establish you. My brothers and my sisters, I believe we all understand that it is impossible to have a testimony without having a text. I wish I had a witness on how hard rolled the smoke. To understand what it's like to go through a test with the Lord. But can I tell you that you know you're going to pass because you know the professor, you know the instructor, you know the dean. We know what it's like to have to make more with less. And I'm so glad on this Sunday morning that I'm able to come before you with a heavy heart, but to declare that our God hasn't brought us this far, only to bring us this far. So instead of you complaining about what you don't have, and instead of you talking about what somebody else got, you ought to be thankful. You ought to be grateful. You ought to appreciate what the Lord has done for you.
I just stopped by to let y'all know, don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Don't give up. We have always had to do more with less. But here we are. But here we are. My grandmother died in November of 1998. And I remember that December, her death certificate came to the house. Highest level of education, the sixth grade. And I said, well, my goodness, this woman done raised all these children, turn around and help raise grandchildren, turn around and help raise some great grandchildren. I said to myself, boy, you better get your act together. Go back down your family line. You will see that we are standing on the shoulders of giants. People that didn't have indoor plumbing. People that didn't have central heat and central air to go into the driveway and figure out which car they were going to drive. We got it good, y'all. We are blessed. But understand that somebody had to come before you and come before me in order to make it happen. It's heartbreaking what's going on around us. Make you angry make you sad, make you just want to give up. But I stopped by to encourage somebody. God hasn't brought us this far, only to bring us this far. And so right now, wherever you are, wherever you are, here in the parking lot, in the comfort of your home, wherever you are, we invite you at this time to give your life to the Lord. And all you have to say is, Lord, I need you. Lord, I'm ready to receive you. And for those of you that just need to be re-energized and be reconnected and be recharged, this is your time as well. Our praise and worship team will lead us in song. And then we will have a word of prayer. We're just going to tell the Lord, yes. Somebody say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. My life, my life is yours. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. My life, my life is
Lord, you haven't brought us this far, only to bring us this far. So right now, dear God, we declare that we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, dear God. able to do for ourselves. Continue to lead us and guide us. And our answer would be yes. Our life belongs to you, Lord. We love you and we thank you. This is our servant. Come on, y'all. 
uncles. Because we didn't know it, but we teach us. Don't I get quiet on me now. Because I can tell y'all, McPherson Academy, I'm still waiting on my paycheck from them, but that's, that's all right. But let's give the parents and the grandparents a hand. The older siblings, let's give them a hand. And let's give a shout out to all of our young people who have endured these last few weeks, this last month or so of school, and they made it. They made it. They made it. They made it. So I do have a special treat for my young people and parents. If we got some extras, I might slide you something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm definitely going to, I got something for my young people, got something for my graduates. Um, but again, I want to say as your pastor and on behalf of this church that we are beyond proud. Yes. We love you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, 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 we do. We love you. Yes. Come on, y'all, make some noise. 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 This is a major milestone. This is a major accomplishment, and we want you all to know that we are here for you. Uh, keep your hand in God's hand, and wherever God leads you, your Mount Zion Church family has your back. Amen. Make some noise for the Lord. All right. <laughs> Y'all know how we do it. Dear Lord, we thank you. We love you. And we greatly appreciate this opportunity. Now let us look to him who is able to watch over us and to keep us and lead us and guide us. May God bless you and may God keep you. Amen.